안녕하세요. 저는 오늘 그 Future of Entertainment, 엔터테인먼트 미래에 대해서 어, 저희 이제 어, 이 엔터테인먼트 업계 그 블록체인 영역의 사업을 확장하고 계시는 어, 이 중요한 분들을 모시고 어, 이 엔터테인먼트 미래에 대해서 이야기를 나누게 되었습니다. 어, 우선 오늘 그 저는 이제 한국어를 할수 있지만 여기 계신 분들 많은 분들이 아직 한국어를 못 하시기 때문에 어, 영어로 진행을 하겠고요. 어, 통역으로 어, 들어주시면 어, 감사하겠습니다. 어, 저를 먼저 소개하겠습니다. 잠깐 소개가 나왔었었는데요. 저는 어, 기프토 코리아를 총괄하고 있는 박동휘라고 합니다. 반갑습니다. 네, 어, 저는 그 어, 기프토에 조인하기 전에 어, 최근 굉장히 어, 빠른 성장세를 국내에서 만들고 있는 어, 유튜브 유튜브 내 유튜브 크리에이터들을 어, 육성하고 매니지하는 그 엔터테인먼트 업계에서 어, 약 어, 2년간 일을 했었고요. 그이 유튜브가 국내에 진출하면서 어, 이 미디어 생태계가 굉장히 많이 변화를 했습니다. 그래서 그 과정을 겪으면서 어, 이그 새로운 어, 시대를 맞이하는 어, 한 가운데 있었는데요. 이 블록체인도 지금 이 엔터테인먼트 업계에서 이러한 변화를 지금 많이 만들고 있다고 생각을 합니다. 그래서 오늘은 어, 여기 계신 분들을 모시고 어, 이 엔터테인먼트 영역의 어, 문제와 그리고 블록체인이 어떤 역할을 할지에 대해서 어, 이야기를 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. Okay, so uh, I'd like to introduce, I'll speak from uh, English from now. So I, I touch base on uh, my background, uh, who, who I am and I, who I am part of. And I'd like to introduce each person uh, to the crowd in Korea and around the world, starting with Nick. Hi, everyone. Uh, really excited to be here today. I am the GM of Gifto Beijing. I actually came to the blockchain world from gaming originally. So I designed social experiences and uh, games with Zynga and launched a bunch of key franchises globally with Zynga. And uh, I'm really excited to talk about social and entertainment here today. Hello, I'm Juno Cheng. Uh, I founded Fancy World with my colleagues, and I'm running uh, Fancy World. Uh, actually, Fancy World is focusing on the new concept of uh, media and entertainment company. So I will explain the, what is the new so in, in my uh, discussion with our panels. So I'm very honored to be here, uh, especially the topic is the future of entertainment. So I'm very excited. 아, 저는 장준호입니다. 저는 한국말 할수 있기 때문에 한국말로도 인사를 드리겠습니다. 반갑습니다. Hello, I'm Manshu Agwal, CEO and founder of Ponder. So I come from a background of consulting and investment banking, and for the last decade I've been working in startups um, in uh, California. And uh, I've had this, I had this idea of Ponder. Ponder is a gamified referrals platform. We're trying to make the act of matchmaking, matchmaking for jobs, for business, even for dating. We're trying to make that into a fun game because the aspect of an introduction can make so much difference in people's lives. Everybody here, I'm sure, can think of an introduction which has really changed the course of their lives, but they're hard to come by. So we want to try to make more of those. And the blockchain becomes a really good technology for us to, to build upon. So I'll talk, looking forward to the discussion and uh, looking forward to getting to know many of you during the course of the next two days. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Jason Lee from uh, Contentbox and Castbox Korea. 안녕하세요. 저는 Contentbox와 Castbox에서 온 이재은이라고 합니다. 저희는 여러분한테 익숙한 팟캐스트나 어떤 비디오 클립 같은 디지털 콘텐츠를 위한 디지털 콘텐츠 결제를 위한 블록체인을 진행하고 있습니다. 반갑습니다. Hi, my name is Alan Natowski. I'm from uh, Austin, Texas in the United States. Uh, I run a company that will be 10 years old in February called Funware. Uh, we're a bit of a guinea pig in the United States. We're the first company in history that has a pending registration statement to start trading publicly on NASDAQ in the next couple of months. Uh, and have already raised $100 million as a private company in mobile and cloud and big data. Uh, and simultaneously are kicking off a fully regulated security token uh, so that we can actually have U.S. investors and U.S. funds. Um, in 
parallel to all these things, we've been excited in the media and entertainment industry to have delivered many of the mobile application portfolios for the largest brands from CBS to NBC uh, to World Wrestling Entertainment and direct-to-consumer offers. And this is a, a great intersection of mobile technology and what's happening in blockchain and how that's going to revolutionize things around the world in this particular industry. Okay, thank you uh, uh, everyone for your introduction. We have a great cast in here uh, in both mobile entertainment and um, traditional entertainment area. Uh, in, in uh, entertainment industry, it uh, encloses uh, many different uh, areas, creative artists, music, games, and so on. Um, you know, but we are facing uh, many different types of uh, problems uh, within the, in the entertainment industry that includes IP rights, content sharing, distribution, payments, licensing, storage, and so on. So many different uh, troubles where uh, all these uh, content creators cannot be benefit out of their uh, entire efforts that they're making to uh, you know, provide entertainment to the consumers around the, around the world. Um, what are the biggest problems that you uh, guys faced from your uh, previous experiences, even uh, uh, leading the businesses in the blockchain at the moment? Uh, that's a question for everybody. Mansu, do you want to start first? Sure. So, I think um, I think the the blockchain can add a lot to to the industry of entertainment, but I think um, sometimes in the blockchain space, I think we're, we're all guilty of um, sometimes putting the technology ahead of the user experience. Uh, user experiences is going to be key to adoption and only if we can actually find a useful so, uh, rationale for using the blockchain will will it be taken up and sometimes I think the the solution kind of comes before tackling a problem um, so for us we, we found um, we found one of the, the biggest use cases actually to lever off the, the previous speaker in marketplaces so the way that um, the Ponda works right now is that it's uh, the the product is actually focused in the in the dating world. So you you are playing matchmaker between two people, right? You pick someone who's a friend of yours and think and you think that they're a good match for another friend. You dro you drag and drop. If the two of them like each other, you win ten dollars in tokens. If they get married, you win a thousand dollars in tokens. And but what people have been asking us for our community over the last couple of years, they've been asking us, okay, I want to be matched with my own tribe, my own quote-unquote tribe, or whatever that might be, runners in Miami, Indians in Seoul, whatever, whatever that might be. And so we want to create these sub-communities where people can create their own little matchmaking business. That's essentially a decentralized matchmaking business. So I can go and create Indians in Seoul and say, okay, this is the rules for the community, all of those are encoded into a smart contract, and essentially, I've got a business that's entirely separate from the central authority. And it's also, from a company perspective, it's also a good way for us to grow. Because who are we to know the rules of all these different niches? What are they looking for? But, uh, but I think, uh, for us, you know, recognizing that exact pr precise pain point and the overlap of blockchain technology, where it could be useful, where it couldn't be useful. We tried a lot around the area of identity, and it's still being sorted out. You know, how is the blockchain really useful for identity? You know, and, and I think there's, you know, there's there's various different arguments about that. You know, can you just use cryptology? Do you really need to have uh, the blockchain or the data is, uh, listed on the blockchain? You know, if the blockchain is really about transactions rather than data storage, then just keep your data in distributed fashion. You don't need to have it on the blockchain. You know, and just use cryptology to access that data. You'll have a secure system. So I think like really figuring out um, where the blockchain and the, the particular aspects of the power of the blockchain can really help you to be much better than existing applications, consumer applications. I think that's where, where, um, where companies will really uh, stand out. Yes. I think um, uh, Manchu pointed a very important thing. Uh, yes. In the uh, user experience. Actually, if you want to find something on the YouTube, you have to go through a bunch of lists, uh, and uh, you have to go through you know huge uh, uh, advertisement. And uh, at, 
the, at the end of the day, what you can find is a link to the real, uh, real thing you, you, you were looking for, actually. A paid, uh, paid, uh, paid contents link, actually. It's, uh, it's a bunch of waste of time, actually. So um, the reason is that the uh, large, I mean, giant platforms like YouTube or you know, uh, YouTube or some uh, uh, giant platform like Netflix, actually they are uh, focusing on um, not, not mostly of the uh, user experience, but they are focusing on the, um, their own profit, not the profit of the creators, actually. Creators are struggling to uh, get their own um, copyright or the profits, but uh, it is not easy. For example, uh, to be a, um, to the minimum requirements for uh, to be a YouTube partner is uh, 4,000 hours, not, not minutes, 4,000 hours, and uh, 1,000 subscribes uh, in the past 12 months. This, this month is is really a, a difficult target uh, for a large amount of creators can cannot achieve. So uh, I think uh, to uh, I mean improve the quality of the uh, the uh, contents. Uh, we have to find the right way to uh, give the uh, right uh, profits to, to the creators. Uh, let me take an uh, example in Korean. Many of you have heard of the podcast. Podcast is almost a complete. Yes, it's a complete. But most of the podcast are very popular platforms. We have a platform, we have a podcast platform. But that platform is actually, in the past, we have been paid for the sale, but now we don't pay for the sale. 어 다만 모든 저작권은 자신들한테 있다고 주장을 하고 있습니다. 사실 자기네들은 어 실제로 뭐그 컨텐츠를 제작하는데 돈을 한푼 보태거나 뭐 그런 것들은 전혀 아니고요. 거기서 나오는 이제 모든 광고 수입도 어 사실 뭐 유튜브도 그렇지만 공유하지 않고 그냥 어 제작자들한테 한 달에 얼마 이렇게 그냥 툭 던져주고 이번 달 100만 원뭐 광고비가 얼마 나와서 뭐 이런 거 전혀 공유하지 않고요. 그냥 이번 달 100만 원, 이번 달 130만 원뭐 이런 식으로 그냥 던져주고 말거든요. 사실 그런 것들이 어 굉장히 큰 문제가 되는 것들은 어 대다수의 그 어떤 그 팟캐스트 크리에이터들은 돈을 하나도 벌 수가 없고요. 사실은 그렇지만 그 플랫폼은 여전히 그런 돈을 전혀 벌지 못하는 크리에이터들의 컨텐츠로부터 돈을 벌수 있다는 거거든요. 그것은 결국 이제 어 퀄러티 질의 저하, 저하를 가져온다고 저희는 생각하고 가장 중요한 건 유저 익스피런스를 그 익스피런스를 그 고양하기 위해서 가장 중요한 거는 어 제작자들한테 올바른 그런 프로핏이 돌아가게 만드는 거라고 저희는 생각하고 있습니다. 그래서 저희가 어 디지털 그런 컨텐츠를 위한 어 블록체인 생태계를 만들게 된 것입니다. So I was going to say that I think the biggest challenge we've seen in entertainment is the business model. Uh, all these things are related. So if you are the company that is distributing to consumers, you want mass consumer adoption. Everywhere in the world, there's a different model for uh, consuming content like World Wrestling Entertainment or HBO Go or Netflix, where it's done, even YouTube Red, uh, by the month for a specific cost. Uh, on the other side, you have emerging markets where people don't want to use subscriptions, but they might be using pay-per-view or transaction. Um, simultaneous to that is the problem of the creators and the original content providers and what is the distribution of all the money that's flowing through? Um, what do you get as a benefit as a consumer? What do you get as a creator? What do you get as the owner of the media company? And what do the distribution partners get? So you're seeing a lot of companies in the United States, the big media companies who are going direct to consumer. They're launching over the top, and they're trying to bypass all the people in the middle through cable and satellite as a means to take money from them and engage their consumers. When you get to blockchain, though, this gets very kind of fascinating because blockchain can be open, candid, transparent with a public ledger. You can have uh, owners of original content decide the rules. If it's a song, how much do you get paid if you're going to stream it to others, use it for your own consumption, put it into a TV or radio broadcast or anything in between? And I think where blockchain can be very helpful is in emerging markets, you can allow people to stake coins effectively on the content they want to consume, whether that it's World Cup soccer right now, whether it's a National Football League game, whether it's WrestleMania, and you can allow people to be themselves all over the world. And the most important part is to validate with biometric encryption your identity so that you know what the interaction is between 
the company, the content creator, and the consumer of that content. And I think we're going to see a lot of developments that go on. And there's going to be a lot of pain points because this is going to expose the distribution of the economics of all of this. And that, in some cases, um, the more opaque it is, the better. <laughs> yes, uh, monetization is very, very important uh, topic around the content creation, for sure. Uh, and I believe many uh, projects, including uh, the CEOs and founders of the uh, blockchain projects here, blockchain is taking a very important role of a wealth, wealth distribution and the copyright issues uh, of things. Um, as a spe uh, speaking of uh, the mass adoption, uh, throughout the day, we talked about the technologies there, how to adopt uh, these technology to the mass consumers. The average users can understand and just appreciate the value, the uh, services that you guys can uh, provide. Uh, what are the challenges that uh, the blockchain projects are having across the uh, mass consumer adoption? Sure, I'll, I'll snag that one. So we spent a lot of time at Gifto trying to figure out what is the easiest, most delightful, magical way for users to experience uh, our token and to use that to send gifts to broadcasters and content creators through our different dApps. And uh, what we've realized is that, number one, it starts with communication. So in blockchain, you have, gosh, how many terms that we've invented. There's nodes, blocks, transactions, hashes, wallets, like all these crazy things that the everyday entertainment consumer is, is not going to understand uh, immediately, or even if you sit them down and repeat it multiple times. So I think starting from communication, and all of us here, right, as early adopters and, and thought leaders, we need to get out there and, and really uh, you know, get, get the word out in a way that's accessible. Um, and it starts with the experiences that we're designing, uh, leveraging what was said about UX. So for us, delightful, magical experiences where you don't even really think about it being, uh, you know, a token or a cryptocurrency and, and that whole line of, of terms I just said. So today, right now, if you open the UpLive app, you see this kind of gifting dashboard and you can send gifts directly to a broadcaster without any of this, this language. And, and we found that to work really well. Let me mention at the first topic first. Uh, actually, uh, there is a lot of problems in entertainment area, especially for K-pop entertainment area. As you might know, uh, there's the unfair uh, profit shares at the streaming music. But now, today, I'm focusing on the fan side. Uh, actually, fan engagement, we call fandom. It was start from PC-based uh, the online community, but with the uh, media platform like uh, YouTube and global SNS like uh, fa Facebook and Twitter, it's grown very fast and now we have a huge K-pop fan engagement. There's a problem is from the fans are getting more smarter and more demanding. Uh, management companies and entertainment area is still very conservative. So we have to solve the, the gap between fan and the management company. So we have discussed a lot with the management company. But uh, young people are getting to know about the blockchain. So they might just think uh, blockchain is a very transparent and fair environment. So how can we adapt this technology to entertainment business, but entertainment area is not much uh, considered about the blockchain and the tokenize their uh, business. So uh, we have a lot of discussion with the uh, fan and also discuss with the management company to adopt uh, new technology to solve the problems in uh, the conservative management companies entertainment area. Yeah, it uh, seems like there's a lot of changes happening across the traditional business area in entertainment. Uh, what are the major paradigm shift that blockchain technology or token uh, tokenization, eco token economy is bringing to uh, each uh, side of the entertainment industry? I'll start with kicking it off. I think that the future of entertainment is a one-to-one -one thing. It's whatever you want, whenever you want it, wherever you're at, indoors or out in your own selfish interest. Um, all of us think about content, what we like and what we don't like differently, 
Um, when I kind of think about the ultimate end game of this, um, a blockchain that really houses every bit of content in the world um, that you can access whenever you want under the rules provided in the contracts that are provided. Uh, it has to meet what the artist wants, it has to meet what you as a consumer are willing to pay, uh, and it has to fit within those distribution markets. So a lot of these things, ultimately at the end of the day, marketing and advertising, the holy grail, is I can meet you anywhere you're at, anywhere in the world, in real time, indoors or out, and give you exactly what you want at the precise moment that you want it. Um, that all starts with the technology, which I agree, has to be transparent. When we all make phone calls, we don't say, is that CDMA? Is that voice over IP? Is that GSM? I call you, you answer the phone, and we talk, and nobody cares about the technology. I think for this industry to evolve and to make it digestible for the traditional companies that do have a lot of power, uh, Disney, Comcast, I mean, these aren't small companies, they're not going anywhere. The reality is that you need to make all of this transparent for consumers, make all the digital wallets and the reward system and the process um, just work. It's better for it to just feel like loyalty and rewards, not blockchain or crypto or smart contracts. Those are things that we talk about that the world will never understand. And honestly, they shouldn't have to. And that user experience is all that's going to drive it. I'd like to add something about entertainment as a whole. Like most, um, most entertainment, especially over the last few years, is becoming ever more driven by social media. You know, we're spending so much more time on social networks, and that's a form of entertainment, whether it's reading Twitter or Facebook posts, or, you know, looking at cat videos, whatever. But the, you look at the amount of work that's done in consumer uh, sectors compared to other sectors in the blockchain, like fintech and you know, um, other areas, and it's relatively small. And I think part of that is because in consumer, you've got this unique situation where you have huge amounts of network effects. So any blockchain-based company that wants to compete in the consumer space, especially with, against social networks, somehow they've got to overcome that entrenched power of these huge behemoths. It's very hard. Even if you have a much better social network platform than Facebook, you're probably not going to be able to beat Facebook, right? No matter how many cool bells and whistles from blockchain technology you're using. So I think we've got to we've got to look at which sectors we can actually overcome, you know, practically speaking. Social networks are going to be a pretty tough one. Other areas like um, where there's utilitarian aspects, such as like weather, you know, weather apps. It's, there's likely to be one dominant weather app because you don't really, you know, weather's weather. You know, you're not going to have various different um, versions of the weather, right? So it's very hard for a blockchain-based weather app to suddenly come along and, and you know, take the world by storm. Certain areas uh, like travel or, you know, in our case, dating, where people use many different platforms, you don't have that same monopoly. I think there, that's where the, the real kind of breakthroughs will happen to create that kind of killer app. We're all searching for that killer app, right? That will really put blockchain into the hands of, of everybody. And I think, you know, in consumer, and I know entertainment, you know, there's a lot of B2B, but on the consumer B2C side, I think those specific areas where there is an opportunity for new entrants to come in, especially if they've got some um, advantage that the blockchain has given them, that's where I think we're, we're likely to find that, that special app that um, can really put a token into everybody's hands. Because if you ask the average person right now on the street in most countries, name me a single token, they won't know a single token, right? So the blockchain is still very much in the nascent stages. And, and how we get into the consumer mainstream, I think, um, I think it, it has to be through smart uh, strategic moves in those particular areas. Yes, very, very great point. Uh, there are many matchmaking services out there, uh, uh, as in maybe in competition with Ponder. Uh, how do you see yourself against uh, these uh, mega size uh, dating applications out there? Uh, how do you differentiate yourself through the blockchain? Sure. So for us, the, the key difference is that there's a third party involved. There's a matchmaker 
and that matchmaker is likely to already be married. So half our users are, are married. Uh, and you know, I won't get into the specific the problems of the, the dating industry, but essentially to say that there's a lot of noise because men and women behave in very different ways. And uh, guys on Tinder, they're swiping right all the time. Right? They're not really caring what they're looking at. And, and for both experiences, that leads to a, a skewed um, problem. And so having this third party uh, allows for cutting through that noise. But where we're using the blockchain is for smart contracts specifically, for communities so that people can create their own sub-community. Now, we have been in dating, but now we're moving into the job referrals market. And job referrals is very similar in that you're connecting a company that you know of, whether you're a current employee or former employee or vendor, with people in your social network that could be a good match for that. And every company wants referred candidates. Referred candidates are always the best. They stick around longer, they're cheaper to close, um, et cetera, et cetera. So by making it into a fun game, more referrals can be generated, more matches can be created. And, uh, and so with a blockchain, we can create specialist uh, sub-communities like elite Java engineers in, in Santa Monica. You know, they've got their own special rules about how to behave and those can be encoded into a smart contract and the token will be the, the medium of exchange between, uh, for the different transactions that, that occur. So, yeah, we found um, the, the blockchain is specifically is very valuable on that smart contracts uh, uh, area. Uh, I know that there are, there are many other areas, but for us, the smart contracts is key. And ultimately, this is a hybrid of a centralized model and a decentralized model, which um, you know, I think the... You know, the purists want to have uh, decentralization throughout, but I think there's likely to be, at least in the initial uh, next few years, more and more hybrid models where it's some things are centralized and some things are decentralized. Yeah, um, speaking of game, uh, I see Nick uh, coming from a game industry. How do you see blockchain integration to mass consumer products like games? What's the uh, pro and cons around uh, the adoption? Sure. So one of the things that really attracted me to this industry actually is um, if you think about how these different chains are designed, they all have you know, different rules and different ways to incentivize and shape behavior uh, among the miners, among participants, among token holders. Um, actually, blockchain design is game design. And if you, if you want to encourage a certain kind of behavior or unlock a kind of uh, behavior among users, including building something that, that has a wave of mass adoption, then you need to think about it like a game designer would think about it. Uh, you need to be iterating, you need to be thinking about uh, reward schedules, um, that combination of, of, uh, of visual and, and other assets, now that you know, we're, we're talking about entertainment here. Um, and so I think not thinking about it as a database or some of these other uh, very narrow kind of technical uh, things, but thinking of it as a game that you're designing, um, even if your product isn't a game, um, because ultimately that's, that's what makes uh, products grow. Um, on the pros and cons, um, I think the, the pro of, uh, of blockchain in terms of its role in entertainment um, is that like most technology, uh, most technology that's, that's new and, and still uh, working out its kinks cuts its teeth in entertainment. And so, um, you know, certainly among uh, teams that have less of a, a spotlight on them, um, you have a bit of leeway to take risks, to take creative risks, to take partnership risks, and try something new. And so, uh, blockchain offers an opportunity for those who are ambitious to be the first out there with something truly groundbreaking, which has its own distribution uh, benefits. One, um, the cons on the flip side as well. Yeah, I was going to say to build on that, you know, I think it's useful to look at Facebook and Google because. If it wasn't for blockchain, I think it would be very difficult to disrupt them and dramatically alter their financials. So when you think about entertainment, which Facebook does, Google does, entertainment companies do, what's profound is that at the end of the day, there's a user. And the economics of that user are largely to be exploited for the company to keep the money and the user to get nothing. So the, the whole reason that we entered into this space is when we saw more than two and a half billion users around the world through mobile applications on the software we provide, we started realizing that we can solve this problem. You can create an identity that's a sovereign self-identity that's used, whether it's gaming or content consumption or anything you do online. 
and you can actually allow you to get in charge of you again. You control your identity. You control your personal information, your data. Most people think Facebook and Google make money from ads. They actually make money from audiences. And when you're in the entertainment industry, you need to reach very specific audiences that want to consume your content. So the reason we wanted to look at blockchain is we wanted to set up an ecosystem like a game where you can incent people by giving them fun coin to effectively use that smart contract to say, you can take all my information you want, even personally identifiable information. You can put me into segments for the companies that want to reach me, but you're going to pay me for it. And that's profound to disrupt Facebook or Google because everything they built was never to protect your identity. You are the product. We are the product. And so what you need to do, I think, what blockchain provides is a mean to say, if 70% of corporations want to spend with someone other than Facebook or Google, the willingness is there, but they're only going to do that if they can reach those audiences. Uh, what kind of effort are you making, uh, Jason, uh, to you know, bring these consumers to uh, different options, different benefits uh, that is provided by Content Box? Yeah, like uh, Alan just said, not only the uh, personal information, all of their contribution, like uh, comments or reviews, are really, really valuable uh, for other users to save their time. Actually, we have uh, to uh, construct a very transparent uh, uh, incentive, as you said, uh, to the, uh, those contributors. Actually, use, users are the contributors, actually, they, they can. So, um, actually, we have, an, um, we have our own um, My Wallet inside. And then users don't have to know whether it's a blockchain or something, spooky thing or not. They just have uh, coins or real money in, inside the app, inside the app. When they make comments or reviews or they uh, help us to uh, um, elaborate or get rid of uh, those crap, uh, uh, crap contents from our app. And then they get uh, incentives. And then they can use uh, those money to uh, spend uh, consume their uh, contents. Yep. As in uh, content, you know, uh, entertainers uh, in Korea are very, very hyper competitive uh, industry. Uh, there are uh, many, many young uh, talents uh, uh, are competing against to, to be seen by consumers, seen by audience. How are you trying to help uh, uh, from the fanship? point of view, do you know uh, what type of uh, message are you trying to send out to these young talents? Yeah. Uh, I think there must be uh, two groups. Uh, first group is very good at this kind of uh, new environment. So entertainer or the content creator and artist can be very ready to meet the fan directly in person or they can make a lot of new chance to get a a profit or gather fan. But the other group is uh, still very conservative to meet a fan directly. So we would like to uh, make some platform for help both of them. So the first group is very uh, much good at the uh, uh, token economy. So they recognize that uh, the activity for the improving the value of the token is more important than the uh, traditional activity for getting the profit. So we, we would like to put together in one platform to help them. So uh, as I told you, we would like to make a new concept of a media and entertainment company to help those kind of uh, artists. So it will be very uh, changeable things in entertainment in industry. Yeah, I am very uh, excited to hear and uh, looking forward to changes that we could see from uh, entertainment industry, dating, uh, games, uh, content consumption, especially in the uh, entertainment area. Um, there are many challenges that we just talked about, many uh, opportunities out there. What are your next plans uh, from each of one of you guys are uh, planning? across the next six months. You know, as, as we all know, one month is very, very long time in the <laughs> blockchain. 
And six months will be a very far back, well, but still, uh, I want to hear from everybody. What are, what are your plans? Sure, I'll start and go through. But so the interesting part is we're already doing uh, 6 billion transactions per day. So that's more than a trillion per year. And that's probably three or 400,000 per second. So when you're doing that, every blockchain that exists would basically melt. So you initially, much like when we've seen this before, it was the internet in the late 90s, it was the migration into voice over IP. First you have to make the things work, then you have to make them scale. And they will be solved, they're very hard problems, but the engineering will ultimately solve it. But in the interim, you really have to figure out how do you slow things down, ironically, to batch them on the blockchain so you can have a great record of these things but work through on the scale and then the transaction costs. If you want mass consumer adoption, there's a big expense to have a crypto wallet inside applications. And in order for it to work, not only does the scale have to work in security, but you actually have to have very low transaction costs. So if you were on Ethereum, the gas cost would be excessive and make that very hard. So a lot of things we're working on in the next six months are to figure out Will Tezos or EOS or Stellar or which blockchain is going to be able to solve some of these challenges? And then how do you work with that through the process of scale? And then the rest of it is about the user experience uh, because the nice part of reaching a billion devices a month, uh, when we flip on our system, we can actually launch more digital wallets than there are Bitcoin addresses in the world. And if you can start turning on tens of millions of digital wallets, largely without people knowing it's even blockchain or crypto, that's the mass adoption that we'll need to then allow that system to have a healthy ecosystem to feed itself. Jason? Um, CastBox is the first uh, partner of uh, ContentBox. CastBox is a podcast platform which has uh, 70 million users already, which have serviced like, uh, like more than two years. So in Korea, we have already a 400 uh, monthly active, 400,000 uh, monthly active users already. So from uh, next uh, two, three months, uh, Korean users will be able to uh, pay for their own podcast contents with our own uh, contents box coin called Box. That is our plan. So you buy um, water or you buy less water or the shoes uh, uh, than um, uh, digital contents, so uh, you will spend uh, more often for the uh, digital contents, uh, digital, uh, I mean, blockchain uh, coins in the future in our app. So there are three challenges that we face. So first of all, on the partnership side. So partnerships is really going to be our focus over the next several months, uh, f primarily on the job referrals product that we're, we're in uh, development of. Uh, we've just done a partnership with uh, a, the largest recruitment service in the world, recruitment website in the world, which will mean that automatically when we launch in November, we'll be the largest job referrals platform um, with uh, several million job postings uh, every year. Um, so that, that's one of the, the key, the first one. The second one is the, the user experience. You know, that was mentioned before that uh, really we want to try to get people to wake up in the morning and match make, match make companies, with customers, with uh, employers, with uh, candidates, singles with other singles. So th that's going to be key, just how do we get that game experience to be delightful. And then thirdly, it's the scalability issue. We're all facing the same issue. So what technology is really going to be the one that is the, the best in terms of minimizing the, the idiosyncrasies, let's say, of the systems right now? Because paying a lot of gas is just simply not going to work every time you want to make a, a fairly limited transaction, minimal transaction. So systems that can be fast and don't have that gas issue, I think um, you know, part of it is that we're going to have to guess which one to go with first because nothing's really ready. But then hopefully the cross-blockchain infrastructure will be such that by the time that we really get to a sufficient point, scaling point, then we can if needed, move to another blockchain uh, if that requires. So. Uh, we are planning to launch a French platform before Q4. And uh, while developing the platform, platform uh, we are discussing with a lot of uh, management company. So we already contract with a couple of companies. Uh, there is uh, two groups. Uh, uh, the company has an idol, and the other company has an indie musician. 
I think indie musician is the first group I mentioned before. So they are very familiar with the with the fan directly, even though they don't have a big fandom, but they are very uh, familiar with the with meeting with the fan and they are recognized uh, the token economy. And other group is idol is not much familiar with the meet the fan directly, even though they meet the fan, but the everything is uh, screened and managed by the company. So uh, they seem to be joined the SNS, but every post is screened. So uh, I would like to expect uh, we can show the, the platform to support both of a group. So it will be happen before. before. Yeah. I'll talk very briefly about what we've done and then building off of that, what we want to accomplish in the next six months. So in the past six months, besides our very successful ICO, we've been able to bring Gifto into the UpLive live streaming app with 35 million users. And today, users all over the world in Android, iOS, on, on web, are using Gifto to buy gifts for broadcasters. That's a huge, huge milestone for us, going end to end, all the way through to consumer usage of the token. We have a bunch of other dApps already in development, some that we're just rolling out, some that have actually been rolled out today. And over the next six months, we want to see those daily transactions on-chain, visible to the whole world, as defined by real consumer usage, put us all the way at the top. Number one, daily transactions would be what we would love to see. Um, that's, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, it seems like the blockchain has still has a lot of challenges to, uh, to tackle uh, within the technology, as well as the mass consumer adoptions, uh, increasing uh, customer experiences. This consumer experience is the most important part of any services around the world. It is very common. So I, uh, I hope uh, the insights that uh, all five gentlemen shared uh, will actually help bring positive change to the uh, entertainment industry in the future. We're looking very much forward to uh, find more successes uh, around you and around uh, a future blockchain projects uh, in entertainment. Thank you very much.